what is ALC's fleet strategy over the next five to 10 years with respect to narrow body versus wide body ratio? Sure. Um, we're looking at about an 80% to 85% ratio of narrow body to wide body aircraft. I think our product strategy has been pretty well defined. It largely consists of the A320-21 Neo family, the 737 uh, 800 currently. We're taking a look at the 737 MAX, of course. And then, and then on the wide body side, uh, the A330, the 777 300ERs have been uh, great performers for us. And, um, and then, uh, again, looking at the smaller aircraft side, uh, coverage by the E-190 and the ATR-72-600. Uh, those have proven to be very, very good asset complements for us. We don't have a lot of our capital tied up in those two aircraft type, but we're very pleased so far with, uh, with the reaction of the marketplace. We've been very pleased with our lease placements. So I think all told, we've got a very good and balanced coverage across all of our product line. Again, from the small side, the ATR-72-600, all the way up to uh, the Boeing 777-300ER. What is ALC's view on the turboprop lease market, and especially the potential development of a 100-seat large turboprop aircraft some manufacturers are considering? Well, we have taken, as we just discussed, we, we've taken a small bet uh, in terms of our capital dollars on the turboprop market. Uh, we've been very pleased with the reaction so far. We have, uh, of course, on our order book, uh, 10 ATR 72600s and other 10 options. Um, you know, we have virtually placed all of those aircraft at this point in time. We think the turboprop market will remain a very viable and, a, in fact, a growing, uh, robust marketplace simply as a function of efficiency and, uh, and fuel. Uh, you know, a lot of these sector lengths, less than 400 nautical miles, there simply just is no aircraft uh, other than uh, a modern turboprop such as the ATR-72-600 that can address this, this market space. As to the larger turboprops, I think we simply look forward and, and are waiting to see what uh, exact performance parameters those aircraft could offer. Uh, actually, uh, we, we're, we're kind of interested in, to see what the demand might be from the airline side. I think you can certainly make a justified economic case for the aircraft, again, because of the short sector lengths involved. So I think we are um, interested in seeing what those aircraft may have to offer. And then obviously, as we are gearing, as, as all companies do, uh, to what our end customer's requirements are, we'll be talking a lot to the various airlines that might have an interest in those aircraft and certainly the leasing of those aircraft. We see further fragmentation or consolidation of leasing companies in the coming years, and where would we see LLC in five to ten years from now? <laughs> well, five to ten years is a long horizon. Uh, I don't know that any of our crystal balls are quite that good, except to say that this management team at Airlease Corporation has been in the business for you know many many decades. We've seen many many cycles uh, in this in this industry and in, in, in the leasing industry. You know, if you wanted to put a summary on it, during good times, a lot of new leasing companies arise. During bad times, most of them, some of them go away. I think, I think the industry will always be in a changing landscape. I think there will always be players that are changing. You have some large parents, for example, RBS's fleet is for sale. Uh, you know, I think that uh, the Isle of Sea portfolio is, uh, or the Isle of Sea S1 has been filed. Um, you know, perhaps gone are the days where, um, uh, a lot of leasing companies are owned by much larger parent corporations. I think our own case, going out independently and, and going uh, and taking our company public successfully in April, um, you know, gives us a great model going forward. So I think rather than consolidation, I think, I, I think the word that I would choose to use would be just continuing evolution and change in the, in the, in the marketplace and the landscape of the leasing companies. I think uh, we as a management team are very committed to this industry. Uh, we're very committed to our company. Um, we've demonstrated by our histories that we are completely long-term players in this business, and that's how we plan to stay. What will be the impact of the A320neo and the 737 MAX on the lease market and on future A320-737 NG values? Well, that's a popular question many have asked recently. I think the simple fact of the matter is if you look in the near-term horizon, you know, the current generation of aircraft are going to be produced for quite a number of years, uh, at least meaningfully into the future. Um, beyond that, over the long, long term, the market decides uh, as to how heavily it's biased towards new aircraft products and how heavily 
uh, in the case of the uh, Airbus A320 NEO, the next engine option, how long that airplane will be uh, produced. So the truth is it's really hard to have an exact crystal ball, but I think if you look at history, it was quite some time before the 737 Classics started eroding, eroding any, in any measurable way against the 737 next generation. You know, some studies have been out there to suggest that it wasn't until the 737 next generation, in terms of its production, equaled almost half of the order base or the current um, delivered and installed base of 737 class classics. I think, you know, looking forward, it'll probably happen a little more quickly than that. But I think the market ultimately will decide. And, um, you know, at Air Lease Corporation, our philosophy is to uh, build our model delivering brand new aircraft from the manufacturers. We tend to enjoy a uh, very young aircraft fleet age, or about 3.6 years today is our average age. Um, and keeping our fleet young, I think, is a very um, fundamental part of our focus. So, for example, we take delivery of our last A320 in 2013, our last current generation A320. After that, we move to the A321 Charglets and the Neos. Um, and I think in the part of our model going forward, generally speaking, we enjoy aircraft in the first third of their useful life. So when an airplane is seven, eight, nine years of age, uh, it usually becomes a candidate for sale. That also helps us with any risks of product obsolescence or any sort of future developments on the negative side with uh, the current generation aircraft. Having said that, if you look over the next several years, we pretty firmly believe that the demand for new aircraft is going to exceed supply. And we think that bodes well for uh, at least current re re uh, lease rates, current residual values on the current aircraft. And we'll just have to see how it all evolves. What challenges and opportunities are ahead for the aircraft lease industry? You know, I think if we take a broad view, um, the aircraft lease industry has had a very significant and probably the most rapid form of aircraft financing. Uh, you know, we're currently about a third of all aircraft being delivered are being delivered pursuant to a lease, to an operating lease. Uh, we firmly believe, and all indications are, that number is going to grow quickly to about 40%. So when you think about it, it'll be pretty outstanding that roughly four out of ten aircraft going forward will be delivered to the leasing community. Um, and I think that actually puts a greater responsibility on all of us in the leasing community. We as a management team have always believed in being very involved with the manufacturers in the next level of product design. We're very involved with Boeing on the 737 MAX. Uh, we've been involved with all the manufacturers and all their product development. I think it simply um, makes it more important for the leasing companies to have a larger and larger say in, um, in product design in, in structuring the lease products to actually meet um, our customer requirements. Uh, there's a lot of creativity that can be put in the leases. Uh, the leasing provides a lot of flexibility to the airlines. While it's true the leasing companies are not the end users, I think that you can say it as a block. The leasing community as a single block is the largest single provider of financing for the aircraft side, and that will grow. So as we place our capital dollars, it becomes more important upon us to um, to work with our airline customers, to work with the manufacturers, uh, you know, as the industry moves forward, uh, just to make sure that we are not only spending our capital wisely, we're getting a good return to our shareholders, but in fact that the products that we're putting out there, and I'm talking about the leasing products, more and more and more are attuned to the demand of our customers' requirements. And especially in an industry that's as volatile as the airline industry, I think it keeps us very sh focused and very sharply focused on on uh, how we can best provide our service to our customers, just like any business. <laughs>